Hey everyone, it's Anna. Welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for visiting. I wanted to come on tonight and share one of the things that I enjoy doing to kind of clear my mind after a long stressful day uh, to kind of get myself into the crafty mood or just to get myself wound down after that kind of a day so that I can actually rest at night. Um, so what I'll typically do is um, grab one of my budget-friendly watercolor palettes. doesn't have to be expensive, just can have a, a couple colors even. Um, and what I like to do is choose two colors from that palette and on my watercolor paper, start with one of the pigment colors and gradually blend into that color, that second pigment, until I've hit the uh, true pigment color of that second color I've chosen. Let me give you a couple of examples because that might be a little confusing. So basically, um, I chose this uh, beautiful phthalo green and I choose, chose opera pink in this example. And so with my first brush stroke of uh, phthalo green, then I gradually added a little bit of opera pink to it and then gradually added a little bit more and a little bit more. And you can see how the color changes when you add that second pigment to your original pigment until I'm finally left with a complete uh, pure opera pink color. And here I've done it the other direction. I started with opera pink and I gradually added in phthalo green to my opera pink, making a stroke of color every time I added a little bit more green until I was eventually left with that pure uh, emerald or a phthalo green color. So that's a, an a example of a color block blend. Uh, here's another example where I went from um, this beautiful blue color to opera pink. And you can see as I gradually added this opera pink color to this blue and made it more and more and more pink, how I came up with these really beautiful shades of purple. And it's done simply by just adding, by gradually adding a little bit of your second pigment to your first pigment. And as you make your paint strokes, it eventually turns into the, the uh, second pigment there. Um, so it's something that I truly enjoy doing, and it's a wonderful way not only to... Um, actually get to know what your colors can do when they're blended together, but it's a really great way just to understand color theory in general. Um, here's another example where I've gone from like a, um, probably like an Aussie gold all the way over to a, a dark green. And so you can see as I added a little bit of that green to that gold paint, um, how that transformed the color into finally being just this, the solid green. And here I probably use, this might be Aussie gold maybe, or quinacridone gold, and I've blended it all the way back through to a blue. And then here I just gradually did it as well, just to kind of get a really nice transition of these colors. I probably just you had the extra paint on my palette and did that. Um, let's see, here's another example of where I've gone from this orange color and gradually added this blue color to the orange and you can see how it turned into this beautiful shades of brown then we move as I got more blue it turned into these beautiful um, shades of green and then finally we're left with the solid blue color um, so you can see these are just kind of my scraps I, and I have an entire bin of them <laughs> and so I thought I would just show you um, how I do this um, Go through this process. This is another really good example. I've gone from yellow ochre all the way through to this blue. So you can see by adding just little tiny bits of blue to this yellow, I've gotten these really beautiful shades of green and then now these smoky shades of blue and finally I'm left with my pure blue pigment. So it's a really fun exercise to do and um, I mean it doesn't take a lot of thinking, which is why I really like doing it to kind of wind down. And um, I'm also left with these beautiful pieces of paper that um, they are certainly not waste. I can use these as um, card back. You know, I can use this as a background on cards. I could cut this um, into a tag. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that I can do with this. And uh, I think they're just beautiful as well. Here's one where I went from purple to green. And you can see how adding just a little bit of green to this purple, I got these beautiful mid-tone uh, blue colors. Here I've gone from olive to vermilion. You wouldn't think that mixing green and orange would result in anything beautiful, but it left me with these really, really pretty uh, mid-tone shades, shades of brown. So um, 
So if you're not sure what a two colors mixed together would look like, this is a great way to do it. Um, the other thing I like doing is not necessarily doing a color blend like this, but I just like swatching colors. And um, so, you know, these are little scraps of paper that I have all the time from cutting down watercolor paper. And so I just make them more usable pieces. And, you know, I can quickly turn this into a tag. I can use this for die cutting. And um, so I just swatch out my colors and um, it's just a really fun way to use your scraps and um, yet create something that's fun, fun to do and then relaxing to do and also still usable at the same time. So there's another one. And then sometimes I like making swatches of my paint pans, uh, my palettes, just so I can kind of see what's in them. This actually I think is a swatch of a Stampin' Up! watercolor palette that I have, where I have some reinkers in a palette. And uh, so you can even see the lines that I've drawn um, to kind of block my um, palette rows. <laughs> so... Um, here's another example of a beautiful color block where I've gone from um, red to purple or red to blue and back again actually so I went from this red to this blue and then back again <laughs> and then here's some more and then here's some other color swatches of palettes that I have um, and they don't all have to be masterpieces these these yes I think are beautiful but I mean, come on, this is not so beautiful. <laughs> and uh, this is not not so beautiful. And you know, it's, they don't have to be they don't have to be perfect, uh, is my point. They can just be splotches of color and you can um, you know learn how to use your paints. Um, you can learn what they look like on various different types of watercolor paper. So that's what I kind of what I was going for here. This is um, a one type of watercolor paper it, uh, is textured on one side and not on the other and then this is a completely different type of watercolor paper so um, it's also a good way for you to test out what your paints do and how they react on various different types of paper and you know certainly I could throw these away but also I can save them and use them as tags as card backgrounds and I think it's so fun here's me uh, painting out a palette that I got and I wanted to see what the colors look like. It was a, probably a 48 set palette. And so I just drew a big grid and then painted all of my colors and probably cut it down. It was probably, you know, this much longer uh, before I cut it down. So, um, and cutting them down just makes them even less precious because now they're a completely usable size for a card front um, or, you know, two tags maybe. Um, and yet if it was a larger size, I might not be so inclined to cut it down right away. So here's another example where I just let all the colors run together. <laughs> so not beautiful in some people's eyes, but I think it's fascinating how the colors mix and mingle and uh, create all these different shades. Um, so uh, doing this is very relaxing and I certainly enjoy it. So I thought I would show you at least how to do the color blocking, um, but also encourage you if you don't even want to go the route of doing color blocking like this, if that's just too much, too stressful, um, just play with color. Put put water down on paper and drop in some color and see what it does. Now I can use this for a stormy, um, a stormy sky behind a lighthouse maybe, or um, I can use this piece here to create a winter scene and I can die cut some winter trees out of this or um, turn this into a winter themed tag. Um, so all different kinds of things that you can do where you don't have to actually paint something, um, I'll say meaningful, but um, you know. You don't, not everything has to be a masterpiece, <laughs> I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let me go ahead and show you how I do that color blocking from one color to another. I'm going to use uh, my little cutting board here as a surface. And I'm going to use this uh, pretty excellent uh, watercolor palette tonight. Um, just because it's a little bit smaller and I might be able, be able to easy more easily show you uh, the process. And then I'm just going to grab one piece of watercolor paper. This happens to be the Canson XL watercolor paper. And so there are the paints. Uh, this is a very budget-friendly set. It's usually about $16 and it is highly recommended for uh, crafters, beginners, um, students, 
Um, it's, a, it's a pretty excellent paint set if you do ask me. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, the brush that I like to use for this process, uh, my favorite one is this brush here. It's an old, old brush that I've had for decades. Um, so long I've worn off the name of it here. It looks like a Royal Langnickel. Um, but it's basically just a flat quarter, quarter inch brush. Um, here's another one that I like using. This is um, a Royal Aqualon. Also just a quarter inch flat. Here's a number eight from Princeton, flat shader brush. So my preferred brush for this uh, method is a flat. And it's just because um, I like the look of the paint lines being uh, in this type of a format. But certainly you can do it with a round brush, you can do it with whatever brush you have. The other thing I like doing is um, most of the time I will start out with a very faint pencil line um, just to kind of give me a stopping point for my uh, lines. Um, I don't always do this, um, especially if I'm exceptionally tired or exceptionally wound <laughs> and need to relax, uh, but I'll go ahead and do it um, tonight for you if I can find a pencil. Okay, here's one. So I'll just put a very, very faint pencil line here and then that just gives me a stopping point for my paint lines. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my favorite brush for this process. I have a container of water here above um, where you can probably see. And I think what I'll do is I'm gonna start out with a, um, sometimes the hardest part truly is choosing which two colors I wanna do which, you know, they're all fun, they're all interesting. I think I'll do uh, this um, yellow ochre. And so I'm gonna move pigment up here into my palette. And then I'm gonna start with my first um, stroke of paint here. And make my first true pigment line. Now what I'm going to do is choose a second color, and I think I'll choose this color here. I don't know what this color is named. Um, let me see if I can actually tell you. Um, it looks like it might be, it's called Turkey Blue. Um, on the palette, whatever that means. Turkey Blue. And then um, what I typically do is uh, put a second line down here, but I want to kind of show you the gradual uh, flow of the transition. I don't want to give myself a definite stopping point. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush, rinse my brush. <laughs> and then starting with a fresh brush, uh, pick up a little bit of yellow here, and then just very gradually start mixing in the blue and then I'll make a stroke here. I think I'm going to put a little piece of washi tape on here so it's not moving around on me. And you can tape your um, paper down if you'd like. Uh, I don't normally tape it down because remember I'm just kind of doing this uh, to, to wind down for the evening and I don't necessarily need to do things that are causing me grief but um, so I'm going to take that second or that uh, first blend here and make a line and you can already see how that color is changing then I'm going to take a little bit more and add it and paint a line and then take a little bit more and add it and if you feel like you get a little too much you can mix it back in you want to kind of see a gradual change. And you can see it's changing ever so slightly here. And it's even more green. Take a little bit more. It doesn't take a lot of paint to do this. Um, and it certainly doesn't take a lot of, you know, paper supplies. It's, you can just use scraps. You always have edges that you cut off when you trim down watercolor paper to the size you need. So just save those in a little bin or drawer. It 
see it's beautiful already. I'll go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can see the painting better. I think you, let's see. Oops, that might be a little too much for the next transition. So just kind of back it off with a little more yellow. see why I like this brush it's just like the perfect width just enough paint to put down I find that about six inches is about how long I like going. Um, this transition is a little slower because I'm not adding as much paint for you, so you can see a more gradual transition. But it's such a great way to see what two colors specifically will do when you blend them together. And if you aren't you know, familiar with what your paints can do. This is a wonderful way to just kind of get to know um, what colors you have. Okay, I need to, I need to get serious here about getting my second color up here. I don't know if you guys can hear Pixie snoring. She's laying under my desk, snoring away. And I think my last stroke here will just be pure pigment. Or close enough. So that's an example of taking a color from one completely through a blend to a second color. So let me back up again. So I think it's so fun and so very relaxing. And um, I thought you might enjoy this too. And I, I'm pretty sure I've done another video on this. I'll, I'll look through. It's probably in my watercolor uh, playlist, my, uh, my coloring and watercolor playlist playlist or maybe it's my coloring and painting playlist maybe but I'll look through that um, and uh, link that video down below if you want to watch the uh, first video I did on this process but I'll go ahead and I'll step through the process again using two different colors uh, maybe green to purple which I, is one of my favorite um, ones to do just so you can watch that process again so I won't necessarily do a lot of talking just because I know this is a way for me to relax too. And it might be just kind of enjoy enjoyable for you guys to watch and not have me yammering on. So um, let's see. I'm going to go from this uh, bright, bright green. It's like a phthalo green to one of the purples in the set.
for this purple here. They are calling this mm, mauve. There we go. We've gone from pure pigment, phthalo green, to, or what they call, um, Verid sorry, I think this is Viridian, uh, to mauve, what they call mauve, in the pretty excellent set. So, very, very fun and enjoyable. So I hope you give it a try. Um, like I said, I'll link my second or my first video where I showed this process um, down below so you can watch that if you're interested. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So um, and like I said, if if you know going through this process is too much for you, but you just want to make swatches, um, here's one that I did where I did it uh, with a larger paintbrush, and I still went from one color to another. Um, and uh, here's blue to orange and purple to blue. Um, and if that's too much for you, just do swatches and let them run into each other and make rainbows of color. Or just do a complete page of color blocks. I mean, this stuff doesn't have to be beautiful. You can cut it down and make it um, usable later. And I think um, on the 15th, you're going to see um, some samples from me where I've used some of these old... Um, uh, pages that I've created in the past on some projects. So uh, maybe it'll give you even more inspiration to get started and try this for yourself. Here's where I've mixed in some shimmering watercolor paints um, to kind of get uh, some really pretty effects that way. You know, this is certainly not, not beautiful. <laughs> so, but I can use it later and make it beautiful. Here's one where I've added some silver um, shimmer. 
These are going to be perfect for winter cards when I'm looking for something that looks cold and snowy. Um, here's one that I added some um, green shimmer watercolors to. Look at this one. This one's pretty. I went uh, mixing uh, that Viridian green to that really dark purple again. And uh, you wouldn't think that that would result in anything pretty, but it certainly is, I think. And here's where I've done some blue to purple to green and added some shimmer watercolors as well. Here's somewhere I've added some that made it look kind of like um, bursts in frozen ice. Um, so let's see, what else have I got in here? Um, here's some more as well. And I really like having my pencil drawings. You know, I can sometimes I'll write the name of the color that I'm working that I'm working with. Um, and those look fun on tags too. You can see, you know, my little extra doodles and stuff. Here's a little sunset blend that I did. Here was just some swatches of a palette on a piece of trash watercolor paper. Um, here's another palette. Here's one where I let the colors all run together. Here's one that I was doing like just sunset colors. Here's one of just greens, <laughs> some yellows, and uh, you know, these are going to be fabulous additions to cards. Look at this one. This one's pretty. And here you can see where I wrote the color name. Cad yellow. So I started with cad yellow and worked my way all the way to whatever color that is. Um, here's another pretty one with shimmer watercolors. Um, and sometimes I'll put on a movie. I really like watching, um, oh shoot, what's it called? Uh, has sunflowers in it. She goes to Italy under the Tuscan sun. Um, I'll put that on. I've only seen that movie probably a hundred times, but I'll put that on and I'll do this. And that's another good way for me to kind of wind down and um, relax uh, at the end of a really long, stressful day. Here's one where I did it in browns with gold or copper uh, shimmer watercolors. Here's one with greens. So you can see I've, I've had some uh, need to relax here. <laughs> Look how beautiful that one turned out. This one, I probably got the paper wet first and then just um, started adding color and that's why it looks so beautiful like that, nice and faded. So, yeah, I think these are really fun and uh, will be, you know, great. Um, die cut into tags um, and used as backgrounds on cards. These smaller ones I'll probably use as tags, but, um, you know, that's a perfect size for a background. <laughs> So anyway, I just thought I would share this with you. You might find it um, inspire. Oh, that one probably shouldn't be in there. That's pretty. <laughs> um, you might find it inspiring to do something like this. Oh, here's another thing I like doing. I make, like making blobs and then drawing birds on them. <laughs> so anyway, um, give it a try. I think you, you, you might find it relaxing. And uh, you too can create a plethora of backgrounds. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.